like every once in a while I'd bring it up with, you know, my, my mom or her friends or something. And I would say like, Oh, I'm thinking about the military. And they would just freak out. They would say like, what? Like, you know, like that's dangerous. Why would you do that? And mm-hmm. I think like their reaction, actually made me want to do it more uh, yes. just because like the kind of kid I was back then. And so I'm like, oh, well, if they don't want me to, then I'm, I'm going to do it. Uh, and, you know, I, and, and I knew that it was just a way to get out of there. So it was like two, you know, maybe not the best reasons, but they, they were the ones that I had. And so when I was in, you know, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, they, they might attribute you know, some of, some of the changes that I went through and a lot of young guys, when they go through the military, you know, you learn discipline, you, uh, get a sense of responsibility and camaraderie and respect and all these things. And all of those are important. I think all of those played, um, a pretty big role in sort of my development and maturity. But I think like less, you know, something that's less talked about or more overlooked is simply the, the role of of being in a like stable and predictable environment with um, sort of steadfast rules and consequences. So in high school, I had almost no supervision, and that meant that I I would do any like if I could do it, I would try to do it. Whereas in the military, it's such a suffocating and constraining environment. It's it's actually it's basically jail. Honestly, for like the first year, the training is so rigorous, and you're there's no privacy that you're basically in jail for your training. And that was actually good for me. Um, All of my choices had been stripped from me. And so I basically did not have the ability to make choices that would hurt myself or anyone else. Um, Simply because I knew that like, if I did X, Y would happen? Uh, No doubt, like the military has that power. I mean, once you sign on the dotted line, they can do what they want with you. And so I, I knew all of that. I knew that the consequences were real. They weren't just bluffing. And that sort of kept me in an environment where I could sort of just do my own thing, like, you know, sort of go through the, go through the training, do everything I needed to do without acting out or acting impulsively. And this gave me time to sort of mature as well. Just that period of, you know, a few years being in a place where I couldn't make my own choices actually helped me uh, a lot. And so that, like, those kinds of things played a, played a big role in leading me to a understand that like, oh, like I should make some choices about my future, about education, um, being around other people too, who, um, who, who, you know, like, like basically like cared about their own futures too. The kind of people who you're around, that's huge too. Yeah. So I get the, uh, impression that, um, if you're in a world as a young person where you have, as a child, where you have these you have no boundaries and you can go anywhere and do anything, which we spend most of our life thinking is what we want, right? We want absolute freedom. Um, and there's also that, that it's freedom and it's chaos at the same time. And so, uh, when you, what you, what you needed or what straightened you out, it sounded like was when you finally had some walls and you would run into them and predict predictably, you knew mm-hmm. the same thing would happen every time. So it lowers like the cognitive burden in, in a way, but I don't understand much about that, but that's what it seems like the effect is. And it's weird because, you know, I run in, I, I frequently run into people who think young people, no, let's go further, children, and if, you know, beyond that, infants are, um, what would you call it? Like, like unconstrained genius or, or, or unconstrained moral, uh, moral benevolence that then gets distorted and corrupted by the adult world. Yeah. And it sounds like you had some, what the opposite experience to that. It's like the adult world actually shaped, molded, and then gave you an identity that was useful. Yeah. 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 I mean, so, so like this, I mean, it's interesting. I, I wouldn't have known this at that time, of course, but like, you know, this is sort of this age old debate in philosophy, this sort of Rousseau versus Hobbes. So, you know, Rousseau was this French philosopher who basically had this idea that, you know, people are born pure and noble and so on. And it's society that corrupts and degrades and makes them into, you know, whatever, uh, criminals or monsters or whatever. And Hobbes, uh, you know, these are, this is somewhat simplified, but Hobbes was this English philosopher who said the opposite is the case. Like men are beastly and evil and cruel and corrupt and society sort of, you know, this Leviathan, the government, the state sort of gets us to behave with the threat of force and punishment and whatever. And 
you know, I think both of those, you know, neither one of those are completely true or false, but um, I think in my case, and for most children, I think, uh, you know, being able to run completely free with no adult supervision, I mean, if, like, I mean, there are, there are things that I did where, you know, I, I should be, you know, either dead or possibly in jail or whatever. And it's just because of luck. I mean, that's another thing, you know, people say, you know, how did you get here? Well, you know, we don't talk about luck that much, but like a lot of it was just pure luck that I have friends who did the same things that I did and uh, they ended up in jail. Uh, drinking and driving is a simple example. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was probably drunk more often than sober when I was driving when I was 17 years old. But it was just because of luck and circumstance and whatever that I didn't get caught. But I have yeah. friends who did the same thing and they got into an accident and someone got hurt and whatever. And they ended up, you know, uh, paying, paying the legal consequences for that. So that's mad yeah. that you had friends who ended up in jail and then instead you volunteered for something you described as jail. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's there, there's an interesting parallel there where they were sort of forced to go to jail, whereas, you know, in a way, I didn't know it was going to be like this, but I sort of chose to go to jail. And I think that was like, you know, the, you know, the military as, as like a form of jail. And I think I needed that. And, and it, it became like, you know, a sort of pseudo parent for me where like, I here are the rules, here's what's expected, don't do this, you're supposed to do that. And it sort of like holds your hand, like in addition to the training and the job and everything, like even very small things like how to pay your bills and how to like, you know, whatever, how to finance your car, like all these kinds of small, simple things. They, there are, um, uh, whatever structures in place to help with that. And yeah, so that was, that was huge in like helping me to sort of become an adult, 